Hello dear members of the Spanish Parliament, it's very great that you give me the opportunity to talk to you today about policy coherence. I'm very delighted that you discussed this very important topic in your Parliament today. I'm sorry that I can't be with you, but I hope this uh, little message um, will also help you in your discussion. Um, as you know, we have recently wrote it on my report on policy coherence for development in the European Parliament. It was adopted uh, only a few weeks ago and I'm very happy that this report came through on which we've worked for many uh, weeks and even months within the committee. Um, so how did we come to this report? Um, in the year um, where the MDGs, the Millennium Development Goals, are reviewed, we found it very important to stress policy coherence for development as one part without which no MDG can be achieved, without which development policies just won't work, because if you undermine your uh, development policies with other policies that you're doing, then um, it doesn't make sense anymore. Um, also, um, the Commission, the European Commission, uh, releases a report on policy coherence once every two years, so that was also an opportunity for us to state the Parliament's opinion on that matter. Now, this is why we did it. Also, it's, I think, very important in the upcoming discussions about the reform of fishery policies and also the reform of the common agricultural policies is coming up. So very important policies uh, for development, which are often not seen in relation to development policies at all. So here we want to make a very strong uh, statement. Um, yeah, and we saw a lot of problems still in the European policies, for example in the agricultural policies, where we have a lot of subsidies for European agricultural projects, um, even though the export subsidies have been diminishing in the last years. There are still some and others which are not called expert subsidies, but actually they are lowering, lowering the prices um, of European agricultural products um, in um, other countries outside the European Union. And then they might destroy, destroy local markets, which is not helpful if we're trying to uh, give money to local farmers in Cameroon, for example, but at the same time we're destroying their local markets with dumping priced products from the EU that are left over here, then that doesn't make a good impact at all. Another area is the fishery policies um, where we have the situation that EU um, fish trailers are uh, emptying the seas, for example, in front of the West African coast, where fishers don't have any income anymore because they can't, um, they can't get enough fish anymore. And so also the, um, the fishing, the processing um, factories um, that are living on working on the fish, uh, fished in that areas are not sustained anymore. So here we also are trying to uh, protect and support local fisher men and fisherwomen, but at, this, the, at the same time we're taking away the basis of their um, of their income. So that doesn't make sense. Here we're giving money with the one hand, but we're taking it out with the other hand. Also, uh, we're giving money to developing countries, but at the same time we're not doing anything against tax havens, where a lot of money flows out. Um, of developing countries into these tax havens and without proper tax, gov tax governance working together also with developing countries uh, we won't see a lot of improvement in that area. So there's a numerous um, examples of incoherences of EU policies uh, where EU policies are actually undermining our development aim which is stated as being the eradication of poverty and Towards eradication of poverty, all EU foreign policies should work. That's what Article 208 of the Lisbon Treaty says. So we're determined to keep us on track. But it's not easy because, of course, um, the interests of European fish industries or uh, farmers, etc., are also being voiced very strongly and often much stronger than development interests. Yeah, and for this reason we did this report and in the report we're proposing a lot of examples or proposals, mechanisms of how we can improve policy coherence for development within the Parliament but also within the European Union. We're for example saying that we need to have an impact assessment in every policy area before we make a policy proposal. It should be clear what impact will this policy have on developing countries and, and if it has a negative impact then of course um, it shouldn't be 
dealt with, it shouldn't be done, this policy proposals. Um, we're proposing also better cooperation um, inside the Commission and between Commission and Parliament and also within the Parliament uh, we think there could be uh, many ways of improving PCD. Um, for example, by having uh, more cooperation between the different committees, for example, between the Development Committee and Fishery Committee, or at the Agriculture Committee, also, or also the International Trade Committee, which is one of the important partners when we're talking about de development policy in the Parliament. We're proposing to have a standing rapture on policy clearance for development, who could be some sort of watchdog within the Parliament uh, to point out areas uh, where European interests might conflict with development interests. Um, we're also proposing to have a biannual report on policy clearance for development to keep up the pressure to evaluate what progress has been made and where are there still um, failures on the way to policy coherence. And one important part is also of course the European External Action Service coming up now where our report states clearly that we want to have uh, development as a policy area of its own right and the Commissioner for Development should have the right um, to um, have the main voice in programming, country strategy papers etc. which we think is very important to determine the future of development policy um, in the European Union. So there we have a lot of um, examples, proposals, which I think could really bring us forward. Now is the time to implement those proposals after we voted on them. So, and that also depends a lot on the pressure of the member states and of um, national legislation. So here is your role as members of parliament. Uh, it would be very great if you could pressure your government, if you could make a legislation that brings forward policy coherence for development. And we're very um, happy also to hear in future your proposals and what uh, your parliament is doing also uh, to compare with other parliaments, how's the process, how can we exchange best practices and how can we bring forward our European development policy as a whole. Also in the German parliament uh, we're going to discuss uh, policy coherence for development um, soon. We're going to have a hearing uh, with experts and we're going to discuss how can we can how can we have legislative proposals for policy coherence for development and how can we also link that with the work of the European Parliament. So I think it really needs a joint effort of all parliaments in the European Union and of the European Parliament itself. And it's very great that you're taking your role in that. And as I said, it would be very great to hear um, what your discussion resulted in, um, what proposals were voiced, so we can also bring your examples, your voices, your proposals to the European level. Thank you very much once again for discussing policy currents for development in your parliament. Thank you very much for your patience, for listening to me. And I hope you have a very good and fruitful discussion. And I'm looking forward to hear from you. Thank you very much.